that girl? What's that? Gang, Bullet Gang Barbecue, May 27th, Joy Hill Park, 12 o'clock. Come out and show out. Today, I'm doing a joint health video. How to properly train your dog so it doesn't get hurt. How to properly nourish your dog to protect them from getting hurt. And also, how to, what kind of joints, uh, what kind of supplements you need to give your dog in order for them to develop the proper joint health. Right here, we have an American Bullet, King. King is currently six months old. He's about to be seven months. He's about 80 pounds. So this guy has been growing very rapidly. American Bully XLs and American Bullies in general don't get that tall, but they get very wide. So you always gonna to wanna to make sure you give this dog the right amount of nutrients, the right amount of exercise, in order to develop this dog. Here we have another dog that is built similar to this dog. This is a Preto Canario, Preso Canary, Cane de Presa. She is a guardian breed dog that can reach up to 200 pounds. She has her own different development, but it's pretty similar to the XL American Bullet. Over here, we have the Cane Corso. This is a very agile dog that looks very thick. It runs a lot, it's very powerful, it likes to jump. And it also has issues with joint problems, hip problems, and different issues. So you wanna use supplements. First thing we'll get into is working your dog. And the specific subject we wanna get into is overworking your dog and how to work your dog. Overworking your dog is doing anything with your dog that your dog doesn't normally do. What does that mean? If I take my dog to the park and throw a ball, that is kind of overworking a dog. A dog doesn't naturally just chase balls, someone has to throw that ball. So the velocity at which the dog is gonna run for that ball and the, the mindset that the dog is gonna to have to go after that ball is gonna be just insane. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you're throwing a ball, you know, be conscious that your dog doesn't know when to stop. So that's a, 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 that is basically something that could lead to your dog getting injured. Just something as simple as throwing a ball. So that is overworking your dog. Another way to overwork your dog is going for long hikes and walks. If you go for these long hikes and walks, if this isn't something that you do with your dog every single day, if it isn't a part of your dog's lifestyle, this is considered overworking your dog. When it comes to these types of dogs, when they are young, under two years old, you don't wanna overwork them. You just wanna give them just enough work in order to stay healthy and develop properly. So the question becomes, how do I train my dog? What should I do with my dog? The number one thing you should do with a large breed dog like this is have an enclosure about the size of these four squares. I'll say this is about 10 by four or eight by four foot size enclosure or a larger enclosure. Especially this type of dog, the Presa Canary is a guardian dog. It's made to guard an estate. So it will lounge around on a certain size estate and pretty much roam around all day and roam back and forth. Same thing with the Cane Corso. It is a guardian breed dog. They basically need a certain size estate or a certain size yard where they can roam and guard all day. Uh, the same thing with an American Bully. He needs an enclosure that is big enough for him to roam and move around in, preferably 10 by 10 enclosures or 10 by four so that he can get a good run get a good stand and spin around. Because these dogs take a long time to develop their back legs, their hind legs. 
they have issues with them and it takes a long time to develop those legs. Certain dogs, not all, but some. Because they're growing from as little as 10 pounds, 10, I mean, as little as 10 pounds, all the way up to 120, 130, 150 pounds within a two year span. That is rapid growth at a rapid pace. And you gotta understand that these dogs, you gotta understand that these dogs are very powerful to where their muscles can pop their joints. Their weight can pop their joints. Their joints may not develop the way you want them to if you're overworking them. So the best thing to do is not to run them. The best thing to do is take them out for two to three walks a day, short time frame, and don't run them until they turn about 18 months. Or if you do run them and you do want to play fetch with them, do that activity with them daily, which daily means every single day. If you ever notice any injury, any limping, any type of ailment, make sure you give them joint health supplements. Also, not only do you want to give them joint health supplements, you may even want to put them on a diet sometimes if they're getting too big. But the main key thing is just giving them enough space to roam around in all day and joint supplements because the space will allow them to roam around, move around, and also build up that strength in their legs. When it comes to a dog like this, very lazy. So she's gonna need more space to move around in because if she's in a smaller space, she'll just tend to relax and take a nap. This guy right here needs less space because he's so turned up that he'll stand on two legs and just be on two feet at all times when he's locked up. So as long as he's not in a small cage, um, he'll, he'll be able to, you know, stretch his legs out. It's a dog like this. You want to watch jumping and you want to watch running. The speed at which this dog runs. She's hurt herself before just taking off and sprinting. So how do you combat that? You just give the dog a chance to run around and warm up. Get her energy out of her system before you start throwing things. So you bring a dog like this to the field. Let her get her run on. You know, let her get her run on and get the energy out of her system before you start throwing things. And then she starts taking off after those things at full throttle and pull something. Also, what you can do is, also what you can do is a warm up. So a nice little bit of a walk. You know, she was very am amped up before we got here, but she's been tied up for a while. So you can, two ways you can do that. You can either walk the dog, you know, a nice amount, then let her go in the field or take her to the field and tie her up. So by that time she gets to the field, she's calmed down. Like right now she's calm. But before when we got here, she was really, really pumped up. And now she's gone, as you see. Running up and down hills is a very good way to build up on park legs. If you ever seen any videos of my man, boss man, my killer partner, boss man vlogs, he has a, a hill just like this at his house where his dogs can run up and down all day long. And what that does is give the dogs the proper, the proper, uh, you know, angles to work those back legs. Building up that strength. Also, when they're on the hills coming down, they build up their chest. But you mainly, you mainly want to be concerned about their front legs. I mean their rear legs. See them digging and pushing. The guy commented, watch King's legs. As you can see, King can run up this vertical hill. This hill is probably on like a, that's 45. I don't know, 60 degrees. I don't fucking know, 45, something. 60 degree angle. As you can see, you see all the movement of my dog. 
perfect movement. You might even want to hit that hill. Let's be fine. Hey, Millie! She's eating us some grass today. Come on, Millie. But yeah, in the short, you want to develop those back legs, give the dog a lot of space to roam at all times. If you ever see a dog injured or showing any lameness or limpness, back off off that dog for 30 days. Get that dog 30 day rest. 30 days where he can just roam around. You might not even want to put him out there with other dogs that will force him to work hard and those joint supplement pills. Thanks guys.